Hi, I'm Tom Lux. This is Council Preview. Steve Barg, City Administrator, thanks for joining me. Great to be here, Tom. All righty. Well, we're going to talk about the June 25th Common Council meeting. That takes place next Tuesday. Yes. Uh, this is Wednesday already. Uh, we're already in the end of June almost. Can't believe it. We're finally starting to get wow. some summer weather, too. We, we struggled for a little while. We did, but, you know, <laughs> before this weekend, I, you would think it was April. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, it was, it was miserable. We were talking about snow. Yeah. <laughs> but, but we have a lot on the agenda uh, that's going to happen here on Tuesday. You can tune in on channel 991 live right at 6 o'clock if you want to catch this live. And uh, there's only a few second delay on our programming. And later in this program, we're going to talk about Facebook Live. And that's another opportunity that you're going to be able to watch this program as well. Well, let's get right into it for you guys and talk about a public hearing. Uh, MIP special assessments. Let's talk about that, Steve. Yeah, uh, a lot of our work, Tom, on streets. You know, people think about totally rebuilding a street. A lot of it, though, is what's called a mill-in-place overlay project, which means the, the crew takes the existing road and they grind up the asphalt, and then they lay it back down and put another two inches of asphalt on top of it. And you say, why would they do that? Because there's value in that existing surface, even though it might have cracks and be broken up, that to discard it is, is a mistake. And uh, they can make use of it to, uh, to do an overlay and make it uh, an improvement that maybe lasts another 15 years or so. So we do these projects every year. This is where roughly $2 million of our city budget uh, is goes every year mm. to a dozen or so uh, stretches of roadway. And as you look at the list, there's about a dozen streets, again, on the docket for this year. And the people, Tom, have been notified. There have been public information meetings. They know their street's being done. Maybe they know that, oh, you know, your tree, can we save it? Okay, I think we can. What about your driveway? Well, we might have to look at, you know, the culvert underneath it. A lot of individual issues have been addressed. This is the final piece where we say, okay, we've sent you a letter. We're saying that you're part of the project. The city pays for a lot of it, but the homeowners pay a portion. You're part of the project might be $1,500, and if you want, you can pay it over 10 years. But now is a chance where homeowners who've gotten these letters can come and say, you know what? Uh, I have a concern. Why am I being charged for a culvert? You know, why being charged for the driveway? I mean, my driveway is good, isn't it? I, I just redid it two years ago. That's what the public hearing is. And, and honestly, this year, strangely enough, uh, I live on North Hills Avenue, and, and, and I have a stretch of uh, this project as well. So I've gotten a similar letter and the chance to, uh, to speak at the public hearing. So it's just a chance for the public who's impacted by these special assessments to, uh, to weigh in. All right. Well, that means uh, it hasn't been voted on yet. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. I think the Board of Public Works has seen it, but okay. in this case, it's you know when they when they later in the agenda they'll be asked they meaning the council to approve the special assessments, and they can tweak it. If someone comes to the podium and makes a good argument, they can mm -hmm. come along later in the meeting and say, you know what, we'd like to change that resolution a little bit. But effectively, what it's saying is for your portion, and again, most of the work is paid for by the city, but uh, but the, the homeowners pick up a part mm -hmm. uh, for various reasons, and uh, you know it, it is an improvement. This is where they say, here's how much we're planning mm -hmm. to charge you at this point. Well, if you guys are wondering what street it is and you didn't see a letter, <coughs> you can uh, check out our agenda usually on Fridays. It's posted to our city website. Uh, I believe we have this on there, and if not, I will uh, look to make sure it's on our on our page for engineering. I think it needs to go under engineering. Would that be? I think so. Okay. So and, and also, let's keep in mind that a website was established, uh, you know, not too long ago. There's a link, I think, uh, that shows the planned street improvements for the next three years. That's right. So, so. this should all be available <coughs> actually now. But uh, I'll double check in case you guys are wondering what streets and you didn't see a letter. So well, let's move on to the next thing, uh, staff updates. This is a great time to share with the public about new employees that are coming to the city. Yeah, you know, uh, a few meetings ago, Tom Butkey made a great suggestion, Tom. He said, you know, uh, we have new employees coming on board and, and council would like to meet them and maybe the public would like to see them. You know, you're going to come in and get a building permit or an engineering permit. You want to see, you know, who's this new face at City Hall? So we have two people we're welcoming right now. They've been newly hired. Um, Mark Riskowitz, uh, he's our city forester. We haven't had a city forester before. And it's exciting to have somebody fully devoted to our, our Emerald Ash Borer program and some other things that we do, you know, taking care of street needs. And then Natalie Delo uh, is replacing Cheryl Edheimer as the uh, Development Services Administrative Associate. And uh, she started a week ago and is doing a wonderful job for us. And uh, so we just want to introduce these people to the council, the mayor, and the public. All right, that sounds good. <coughs> let's move on and let's look at, I'm just kind of 
of going through the consent agenda. And those are topics that are pretty much in all our committee meetings uh, that are discussed. And uh, let's talk about uh, a resolution that took place, or I shouldn't say take place, but a, uh, appropriation to the 2020 budget. Yeah, you know, Tom, these, last, these next couple of items that come out of the Finance, Budget, and Personnel Committee for consideration mm -hmm. really stem in large part from the audit that we just went through with um, with CLA, and if you remember, there's been a lot of talk lately about TIF transfers, and you know, as a city in a in a, in a difficult position. Well, we, we try to do our best to try to make sure we can control expenditures. What this resolution says is, hey, look, we identified earlier back in late fall of 2018 some costs that we thought we might want to incur in 2019 from monies that were budgeted in 2018. So we put a sort of a bookmark down in late 2018 that said, you know what, here's some things we'd like to reserve the right to transfer the monies forward from 18 to 19 to expend funds that for some reason we couldn't spend. Maybe we wanted to buy something but we couldn't get a good price on it, or we weren't sure if there was gonna be an overage in the cost of that project. So what you have uh, in Exhibit A on this resolution is about a dozen projects uh, that uh, we wanted to carry monies over, and now we're confirming to the world that we actually are carrying over and using the monies. One is nuisance property abatement, for example. That's where we find that we have to, to take a, you know control of a site in terms of taking down an old shed or something when we can't get anyone else to, to do it. And right on down the line, there's library, there's uh, business software, uh, adult athletics, things where we expected that there might be an overrun, mm -hmm. and now we're saying there was, and we want to go back to our, our position that we wanted to have extra funds from already approved 2018 money. And this, these are items in, in departments uh, from the general fund, correct? Correct. That were 2018, 2019, you said? 2018, 2018. planned, they were yep. budgeted for 18, yep. and for some reason when we got to the end of 18, mm -hmm. the department had said, you know what? We're not going to be able to do this in 18, mm -hmm. but it still needs to be done. Can we carry the monies over to do yep. it in 19? Yep. And uh, like I said, there was a preliminary resolution done earlier, but now we're committing to the fact that yes, we are using those funds to do work in 19. And and that still needs to be reapproved. You're telling me. That well, this you, resolution does. Okay. I mean, the council could say, you know what? Why uh -huh. do we still need to okay. to to spend money on that uh, business software yep. system? Uh, but the staff will call them back to the fact that it was at least flagged in late 18 as something that we thought we would want to transfer forward, and they had at that time said, yep, if you need it. Uh, so this is kind of confirming. You bet. All right. Um, why don't we talk about TIF districts? Did we mention anything in that uh, yeah. as well? We talked about the, you know, this is again in the finance uh, uh, personnel committee that was held on June 18th, which was last night. Um, is there, and then, then we also talk about uh, the bank that we're gonna be going with, which is Citizens uh, State Bank of Loyal, which is what we've been going with. Yeah, maybe right. I can even lump these two together yeah. in, in a sense, but um, the, the TID audits thing you know, came out of the, the TIF transfers and how our TIF districts have been accounted for, Tom. And the thing is now there's three districts that really are at a point, according to state law, they should receive audits. And one is TIF district uh, number uh, four, one is number seven, one is number nine. This is based on where they are in their life. And what you do is you go through and make sure that all the expenses and revenues have been accounted for, that the monies are properly where they belong. Um, it's a status update in terms of what project costs have been incurred. Mm -hmm. And so we need, to, we need to have this work done. We want to use CLA, who has been called Shank in the past, but now they were bought up by Clifton Larson. Okay. And uh, we'd like to use them. And there's, there's a fee for it. I think it's uh, about $2,500 to do these audits. Mm -hmm. But it's important, and the, and the funds actually, the, the expense can be charged back to those TIF districts, which means that the county and the school district and the tech college all pick up a portion of that expense. Okay. The, ba the banking issue is, you know, every, I don't know, it, it doesn't, state law doesn't say it has to be so many years, but roughly every five years or so, we go out and find uh, proposals for banks. We want, just like you at home, we want the best rate, we want the lowest fees. You know, can you give us the best deal? How, what's our minimum balance need to be before you start charging us? Mm. So we, we got proposals, and if you look in what I shared with you, we got six proposals. Uh, Associated Bank, BMO, Citizen State Bank of Loyal, Forward Bank, Partners Bank, and State Bank Financial all took the time to put together proposals as to what they could do for the city of Marshfield based upon our balance, our, our funds that we monitor and, and use, uh, you know, what, what we bring to the table. And after all the, the, the options were reviewed, the proposals were looked at by the team, they recommended and are recommending that we continue with Citizen State Bank of Loyal for another two years with a, an option for a third year if we want. Uh, they're very competitive. Uh, and uh, we've been pleased with them for the most part in the past few years. So the recommendation, at least, is to stay with citizens. All right. Well, that's good information. Well, we got a big 
Economic Development Survey uh, that we're going to talk about. Uh, people might be aware of it. Uh, it went, took place earlier in May, and Mackey and several others uh, helped promote it, and uh, we got some uh, good response back. Uh, tell, tell us about it. You know, Tom, this is right up your alley because yep. you've been all about trying to get public input. So there's a questionnaire. It's about 15 pages, and it was put out there available for the public to use uh, to see what do you like about the city of Marshfield. Uh, you know, what things do you want to see? Where are we? Where are we doing well? Where are we falling short? And we got, you know, it's hard to get responses on surveys. We got 975 responses, almost a thousand responses, and that's pretty good for a survey of this type, um, which a lot of people might have thought, well, you know, who's going to take the time to fill out 15 pages worth of questions? Mm -hmm. And they, they answered a lot of things. You know, not only did they give us their their own background as far as their age category and, and things about themselves, but they told us what they are really looking for. The biggest takeaway you're going to hear when this presentation is made by Josh Miller on, on Tuesday night, Tom, is they want retail and restaurants, more shopping and more places to eat. And we've heard that before, but some of it's been anecdotal. Now we've got 975 return forms that point to the idea that, you know, we need to work with Mackey and Main Street and others mm -hmm. uh, to try and um, help foster an environment to grow those types of businesses. Well, I bet we'll learn a lot more, <clears throat> and hopefully we'll learn a little bit about uh, demographics and the people that are asking of that 975. Uh, I'm going to actually look into it. I think it would be a great program for myself oh, with yeah. Josh, our economic development Thank director, you. even Mackey along with it, uh, to do a little bit more in-depth program on this, and I'm going to be asking Josh to do that uh, probably after the council meeting, and that'll hopefully foster some questions. You guys are watching on 991 on Tuesday night or joining us at the Common Council. We really love you to have you come there. We have plenty of seating. Open to the public, 7 yep. p.m. Or excuse me, 6 p.m. I have 7 on my head. It used to be 7. used to be yep. 7 before my time, actually. Um, but yes, please join us. On, and, and then they'll, uh, Josh will talk more in depth and probably have a presentation and, and uh, you'll be able to see that. So. Yeah, and, and, and even more than just, you know, it's not just about retail and, and uh, restaurants. If you look at the survey form, uh, and this is what he'll be touching on on Tuesday night, we ask, you know, what do you like about uh, the city? What, what helped you to move here? Was it cost of living? Was it your job? Was it near family and friends? Uh, what are the reasons you've decided to stay here? What's most important in the future? We talk about amenities. Uh, you know, what are the recreational opportunities that should be a priority in the future? Tennis courts, volleyball courts. Uh, it's, it's very all-inclusive. It's not just simply about mm -hmm. shopping and dining. It's about all the things that go into making this uh, a community and what people like and what they think we need to enhance. Exactly, because it changes every five to seven years. Oh yeah. Uh, quite a bit and uh, you know new people move in and move out yep. of the city. Um, <clears throat> a little bit different here in Marshville than other uh, surrounding communities. Uh, you know we have a very large clinic system, we all know that. We and, do. and you know we need to see what those people that are actually working in the clinic want in our community as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so um, <clears throat> hopefully uh, we can hear from them and yeah. move forward in what we have to uh, go with, and uh, it'll help make a place better place to work, play, and live. Or yeah. yeah. So, so Josh Miller, our development services director, will be doing a presentation. I'm guessing it'll be 15 to 20 minutes. Yep. Maybe he'll take questions from the council, but hopefully there'll be some good dialogue about where we are and where we need to go at least according to the people who responded exactly and you know there's uh, open comment uh, beginning of the council meeting uh, I, I always think that's a good place to say something well if, uh, if they're it willing is. to come by and and mention something then all our department heads are there and and others uh, throughout the community are listening and watching uh, you know I think it's a good time to mention something, if, even if it's five seconds, ten seconds at the podium. Uh, the mayor will welcome uh, anybody that's not that's that's available to talk about something, and I think that's wonderful to get that information. That's out. a good so, point. Public comment has been yep. used more in the in the in the recent yep. past as far as getting out the word about your events or you know what you want to celebrate in the community. So exactly, I to totally agree. Just like last week, uh, we had the yeah. uh, uh, the soccer team <laughs> from the Marshfield High School came, and uh, that was those are those are very uh, important moments in our community and our kids get a chance to uh, uh, be recognized. So, absolutely wonderful. Um, <clears throat> if you're just joining us here, uh, Marshfield uh, Community uh, Media, which is uh, Marshfield Media Access, and I'm uh, sitting here with Steve Barg, our city administrator. Uh, it is our council preview. We do this every two weeks, a week before council, uh, to get you informed on what's going to take place on the council meeting. And uh, <clears throat> if you have questions before, feel free to you know give me a call. You're always welcome. Give, uh, I'm sure, Steve or, or the city oh, yeah. itself a call. 
you can call a Amy Krogman, get in touch with you as well. My number, 715-486-2070. Um, Give that a call. I can always forward that to Steve. Uh, you, you know, I'm open to uh, providing answers as I get them from department heads or um, oh, yeah. uh, Steve. Uh, this this is well. already the year of, of trying to uh, engage the public. Oh, yeah. Yep, and, and we're going to uh, do more with our website as we uh, move forward. I get more acclimated in my job and what I'm doing and get David involved and uh, getting this uh, uh, access station involved as well. Uh, we get two birds with one stone is yep. what I say. Yep. <coughs> well, let's move on here to a budget resolution. It has to do with the railroad. As we know, the railroad's a main piece artery that goes through this town. Uh, what needs to be fixed? Well, yeah, and first of all, the next two items are budget <coughs> resolutions, Tom, and maybe just to remind people why we have people hear this budget resolution why are you always doing budget resolutions you know when we adopt the annual budget in, in the fall that you know you're keeping an eye on your taxes here and, and the, how the money is spent if we ever want to deviate from that for some reason and uh, you know in a way that wasn't planned you know we generally have to do a budget resolution to transfer money from here to there to cover the unexpected cost in this case Tom we uh, we have uh, some railroad track that we're responsible for not Canadian national but we actually are responsible for in the East Industrial Park and uh, it was you know built back in the early 70s so it's almost 50 years old, and it's it's seeing some deterioration, and some railroad ties are, are kind of declining and need to be replaced, and those types of things. So we didn't think about this in the 2018 budget. It's come to light that we need to start this sooner rather than later. So we're asking right now if we can take uh, $15,000 from contingency. That's the account that you know you have in case odd things come up, just like happens at your home that you didn't expect, and uh, apply it to some railroad track maintenance this year. Now we're also going to have to do similar work in the next couple of years. We're going to budget for that. So the 2020 budget and the 2021 budget will have actual line items that say railroad track maintenance. But for this year, we're saying, Council, we really can't wait, we don't think, until 2020 to start this maintenance project, this multi-year project. Mm -hmm. Can we transfer money from contingency to uh, begin tackling this unexpected expense? And just uh, touch base on the railroad. Now, East Industrial Park, there's some several businesses that actually use our railroad to get stuff in and out. Is that correct? There, there are, yeah. Okay. And you know, oftentimes you look at a railroad, Tom, and you don't think about it as needing maintenance. You know, we've all walked on railroad <laughs> tracks in our life, hopefully safely, yep. right? But uh, over time, you know, there is maintenance needed to the railroad ties and, and other parts of, of the, the track. And uh, like I said, in this case, uh, the industrial park, the arrangement is that we're responsible for the maintenance, and uh, that's come to light now, so we need to deal with it. Yeah, 50 years, definitely. That's a long time. That's a long time. So, <clears throat> And then uh, you did mention uh, the other budget resolution, uh, which is our um, fiber connections to a tower to help improve our communications for fire and police. Yeah, and this budget resolution and the memo are still coming together as we tape this, so you know, I, I don't have all the exact mm -hmm. details, but I know the, the, the heart of this. Uh, some people have seen this program for quite a while before you were actually our communications director may remember that there was a complaint for quite a while in the community that uh, the officers and the fire people when they were in buildings and in certain parts of the city couldn't communicate successfully. And at one time we talked about replacing all the portable radios, and then we kind of put that on hold and said, wait a minute, maybe if we had three or four towers in the community, that would be more effective. Ultimately, we've kind of gone a dual approach. Uh, as you know, we replaced some portable radios for police and fire to much better units. Mm -hmm. And in the case of fire, they're actually dual frequency units. But the tower is still going on, and we're still trying to locate towers. Well, one of the towers that Wood County has been working with us on, uh, there's some additional money that we need to spend on, on fiber connection that we weren't anticipating, as I understand. And so, again, budget resolution. We have to move the money from somewhere to cover it. There were monies in 2018 planned for some of this, but uh, you know, because of how monies are moved, we need to to get council's blessing to do a transfer to actually expend funds. and uh, But the main thing is we've really, I think we're largely addressing this. Mm -hmm. So the old concerns about police can't get out of uh, Menards or Walmart, they're trying to call for help and nobody can hear them. We've gone a long way now toward resolving that and we're continuing to make it better. Okay. Um, and it might be before your time as well, when the county took over dispatch, which mm -hmm. is in Wisconsin Rapids, was that part of the, the reason we have to have a tower now because of that? Because it's not uh, in the city? I'm just curious, and maybe you can't no, answer it's, that. It's, but it's, 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 I think it's mainly something that's been there all along, okay. and that's uh, just the, the, the ability to communicate out of certain parts of the city, especially with portables. Right. I know I was in a drill a few years ago. We do these emergency government drills, and we did one in the school district, but if there was an active shooter, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. you know, and uh, and we played it out. And one of the concerns that came from that is there were officers in this exercise that were in the school building trying to communicate to other officers via portables, mm -hmm. and uh, it was uh, shaky. Well, you, you can't have that. No. We see this all over the country where these kind of incidents occur. So uh, we have since now gotten the, the new radios, and the towers will even make it better uh, to put us in the best possible place to where the officers and the fire uh, personnel and EMS personnel can communicate no matter where they are in the city of Marshville. Alrighty. So. Well, when those, uh, uh, <coughs> this all goes through uh, and they start putting that in, uh, we'll, we'll educate our public on how that is going. And uh, I'm curious as well, since uh, yeah. we did that in uh, the mayor's town hall about the radios with fire and, yeah. and shared that. And those are pretty neat radios. And we definitely want those to work properly. We do. And uh, it looks like we're moving ahead in Cer the right direction. Certainly police, fire, and ambulance services oh, are, are the most important thing, I think, that, that people, along with streets and other things. Yep. Uh, and uh, we need Need to be able to tell people those are that's we're protecting public safety exactly because that's you know that's where our taxpayer money goes to and that's really important that's that's our top lead fire yep. police yep. Um, ambulance and that, that's a little bit different how that works but, um, but it's, it's funded in a, a, in in a, a different, different way right, but right, very important right. uh, our, our, our health and our safety is number one no Tom at this point in the meeting I'd <laughs> uh, it's not a meeting I'm sorry at this point in the program I'd like to do a flip-flop on you here turn around because you'll actually be presenting one of the items and it's about uh, using Facebook live to cover city government meetings tell us uh, what that's all about you bet well Facebook live is is a way for us to uh, <clears throat> put the meetings not only on cable television live but as well as Facebook that is a platform that's been used now for a, a good amount of time uh, 12 13 years and and we all know everyone has mobile devices those are the most everybody pretty much has one 70 80 90 percent of people now have those and you'll be able to watch our common council meetings live uh, on those uh, devices not only on the website uh, but also on Facebook live and it's a way for people to uh, engage after the meeting um, well, we're going to have uh, open after the meeting for people to uh, put their questions and comments that need to do but we're, we're going to have those closed off during the meeting so those comments aren't taking place uh, because that's really uh, when we're having a meeting our, our open comment period is really at the beginning of a meeting so we want to continue yeah. that process and not have that uh, on, on the the actual meeting at that point but we are going to encourage it afterwards uh, for people and they'll be able to go into our city Facebook page it'll be shared on other multiple platforms we encourage our public to share it as well it'll be open to share we want as many people as possible to watch these meetings uh, because that's how they're become engaged and informed and we can do the things uh, that you guys want we're here we're spending your money uh, to, to be helpful to this community yeah. so that's why we want to hear from you we want you to be engaged and Facebook is another way so uh, we haven't used it I know our other uh, uh, our entity that before my time here uh, with uh, with MCTV I know they were going to do that but other other media entities provide Facebook live but we're we're going to provide it as well and uh, it'll stay there uh, available uh, at any time to watch in a playlist and we'll share it on media Access's Facebook page as well if you're uh, if you're a friend of both you'll get that and uh, I'm sure Bo Bob our mayor will share it as well yeah I think this is wonderful Tom yep. it's gonna be a great improvement when this was presented a couple months ago there were a couple of questions mm -hmm. one you've already addressed with the idea that by closing off the uh, you know the the comment period during the meeting no one can accuse us of violating the open meetings law by having people participating in the, in the meeting that you know can't be questioned or who aren't there but uh, and that's great. The other thing, question that came up was this idea about microphones. You know, would they would, would this be live even when the meeting's not going on and people might say things they're not supposed to? But it sounds like that's been addressed as well. It is. Uh, what we have uh, done to, to help with that is. Uh, if you've noticed, uh, all the council people, as well as administration, yourself and, and Bob, are able to turn off their microphones when they're not uh, speaking, which which will help in any uh, er any issue that may happen before or after. You know, everyone's always talking before the gavel hits, right. and uh, you know, for us to broadcast, we have to be careful uh, that it's not on. So that's another safety measure, uh, is what we did, and and that was uh, a request of our council, um, and uh, and that's also I think it's a great thing myself uh, we just got to make sure that our council people are turning on their mics yep. and and it'll get time to get used to it we know that uh, it, it's uh, after five six months it'll start becoming more of a habit uh, but uh, that'll help uh, with uh, making sure that we're, we're doing things correctly and uh, uh, getting that out uh, to the public as well uh, good audio it, 
included cool. with that process because it makes uh, a councilman or a staff person be a little bit more uh, understanding of their mic because you have to turn it on rather than it just gets and, and we all know that happens so yeah and we'll get there I mean yeah. the whole the whole idea of the new technology in the new council chambers has taken a little while to get used to the voting system and oh, yeah. and all those kind of things and, and everyone's come along with that as well so yep so uh, look forward to that myself uh, David as well uh, to put that on there we're ready to go we have the the technology to do it that wasn't uh, really available uh, in this building where we are now um, below in the old common council chambers we have that new uh, equipment that we really use one person to produce a meeting now versus yeah, uh, yeah. I think three in the past two cameramen and a producer so uh, you know we're able to do some of this and now Facebook's another addition with a one person uh, that's yeah. able to do it so yeah. looking forward to that well I got to play host for a couple minutes but I'm gonna yeah. uh, turn it back to you then all right well there's a piece of property that's over by uh, Beale Stadium which is uh, no longer gonna be used as I'm, as I'm understanding for the football season uh, it's our property uh, older person Jason Zaleski has brought that back up to discuss the uh, disposition of that property. Yeah, we went through a lot of discussion back in 2018, Tom, about the, uh, a property at uh, the corner of uh, East 8th Street and Hemlock Avenue. It, it's been an informal parking lot for a long time. I didn't even realize this until this came up, that the city actually owns that property. Hmm. It's not paved, but people for forever and a day, as they say, have been parking there when they've gone to football games and other activities at, at Beale Stadium. And uh, it, it's used also, I'm sure, for when there's practices and other events. But the city decided about a year ago, you know what, why do we own this? You know, and we, so we talked to the school district and said, would you guys like to buy it and pave it and make it a real parking lot? And they, they said, well, not really. You know, at that point, they were talking about some of their plans for new facilities and, you know, they, they just didn't want to go that direction. So we got council approval to do what's called an RFP, request for proposals, to see who'd be interested in buying it and doing something with it. And we thought it might be a good place to build houses and whatnot. The idea being that this property could probably support two homes, actually. Mm. It's, it's big enough. So we went through it, and there was one proposal from Habitat for Humanity. That's all we got. And after some discussion in October of 2018, the council said, you know, let's just put this on hold for a year. Uh, the school is still going through some things with uh, the new football field and some of the changes in their campus master plan. Let's let things shake up for a little bit, and then we can revisit it a year or more down the road and decide. Do we still want to get rid of it? Uh, you know, maybe the school district's plans will change, and uh, let's let it lay for a while, so to speak. Well, Jason Zaleski, one of our council members, brought up at the end of the last meeting, he said, you know, I'd really like to revisit this. I know that we agreed to wait for a year, but, you know, I think it's worth talking about, and uh, let's put it back on the docket. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what they have there right now. It's just going to be, I think, him making some comments, and, and we'll see if the, the council as a whole wants to tackle this or if they'd prefer to keep waiting until later in the fall uh, to, to take another look at it. Yeah, because, you know, possibly sell it if we don't need it, uh, put it on tax roll again. Well, yeah, we'd like to see some tax base. Yeah. And, and, Tom, there have been a, the neighbors in this area who were a little concerned about this last year, and I understand, you know, their concerns, but there's been some assertions that maybe the abutting neighbors would like to buy it and, mm -hmm. and work to get, you know, one or two homes on there. Um, and they didn't make a proposal the first time. So, I mean, it, there may be some merit to reopening this, but um, like I said, it's, it's being presented for almost a pre-discussion thing. You know, we agreed to wait till October 2019. Do you still want to wait till 2019 or is the council willing to open this up again and discuss options? All righty. Well, we'll see what happens on that when uh, that's brought up here on Tuesday. Well, we have our strategic plan, 2019-2021. Yeah. Yeah, this yeah. thing is great. I think it's a great roadmap for all our departments. Um, I'm on here as well, communications, yep, and uh, we want to look at this. We don't want to put it to bed uh, on a shelf, as I know you have said, uh, Steve, yep. and uh, we need to have this uh, on our desk pretty much all the time to, to keep a focus on where we're going uh, and be uh, financially uh, uh, what I'm trying to say is financially, I can't think of the word that sound. sound. Yeah, sound, there we yeah. go. It's, it's just not coming up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, many times. It's like, where is it coming? Yeah. Um, but let's talk about this, Steve, and what's, what are we yeah. going to see on uh, on the uh, council meeting for yeah. this? Well, first of all, for those who aren't familiar with the plan, uh, you know, uh, when we did this, we wanted to make it a very specific, tangible plan. You know, you talk about things that people put on the shelf. I've worked in other communities, and I've seen other plans where, you know, the plan is we're going to be the best city in Wisconsin. Well, how do you do that? Well, it says right here we're going to do it. So let's do it. Uh, this has very definite specifics in five areas. Promoting quality, economic, and community development. Effectively managing the city's financial resources. 
enhancing our investment in our human resources, our, our personnel, building in them, incre increasing our communication with the city stakeholders, meaning other groups, residents, people who depend on us for information, and then finally, to measurably improve the city's infrastructure. And in every one of these categories, Tom, as you look at the plan, there are very specific action items, uh, things that we're supposed to be doing in the next three years, and they have a timeline. Some of them said 2019, some said 2020, some say 2021. Well, we want the council to know that every six months we're going to come back and say, take a look, here's what it is, here are the here are the seven things we've done so far, here's how far we've gotten, we're, maybe we're done with them. Here's four other things that we've started, they're not finished, but we've you know gotten some legwork in, mm -hmm. and here's some other things we haven't gotten to yet, but we intend to. And the idea is that you, at staff level, we pull this out periodically and say, are we still working on the big things? Because I know you and I and everybody else who works at City Hall have a lot of fires to put out, have a lot of burning issues right in front of us, but, but do we take time in our week and in our month to go back and work on the big things? So this is kind of a, a report card, if you will, to say how far have we gotten on the 2019 part of this plan and where are we going next. All right, and this is presented by you, Steve, right? Yep, I'll be presenting it. Okay, yep. so uh, we'll get a chance uh, to uh, talk a little bit more uh, at the council meeting, I, not me, but Steve, and uh, hopefully uh, you can uh, kind of go through a few of these things and our, uh, our council will be able to ask some questions uh, of it, and uh, I think yeah. we're right on track. I look at it, uh, you th talk about economic and community development, look at the survey we did. That's, oh, yeah. that's all part of it, yep. and then we talk about city financial resources and we talk about the TIF districts and how we're doing that. Yeah. We have Ailers now coming on. You know, we're definitely looking into all these areas, human resources. We have we talk, we have uh, our new McGrath plan. Yep. Uh, we're following that. We're calling increasing communications. We're developing all that right now with fi uh, Facebook, this place right here. So um, we just need to make sure that you guys, uh, our city, uh, our residents, our, our even our visitors are aware that we're doing this. Yeah, and yep. if anybody is watching us today and wants a copy of the plan, get a hold of Tom or me. Yep. Uh, I know you gave your contact information earlier. My phone number is 715-486-2003. Uh, I'm on, if you look at the web, you can find my email address too. We'd be glad to, to, to send you a copy of this plan. You know, a lot of it's stuff that you probably you know, don't, don't even know what's going on with the zoo, with streets. What is it we're trying to work toward? And not only, Tom, will we review this every six months, but we'll also update it from time to time. Because maybe we look at it at the end of the year and say, you know what, uh, the uh, the the plan needs to be modified yep. to meet some of the current needs. So I'm excited about it too. Exactly. So, and uh, I'll make sure these are out at our, uh, they should be out in our lobby of City Hall. Yeah. I'm hopefully they're even at like Parks and Rec. Uh, that's something that's my job, I, I believe, as a communications to help make that happen with other departments. Uh, put it a, another piece on my plate, but that's okay. These are, this is very important. This is a, this is our roadmap. I really it feel is. it's our roadmap. It and if we don't have a roadmap, uh, we end up going down the wrong road and uh, that's not a way to go. So. Uh, all I can say is um, I'm, I'm impressed the past uh, six months I've been here almost uh, to see these kind of things and uh, uh, I think you two should be very uh, impressed in uh, the staff of our city uh, providing all this stuff and uh, I think we're way ahead. I've worked for uh, other cities and other communities and worked along and I, this is a top notch uh, I, I really think. Well. We're almost at the end, but I do want to bring this up, Steve. Yeah, it's absolutely. really important. Uh, no, this is our, our weekly, uh, brought this back. It was on a hiatus for a little bit because we were putting this together down here. I had to take about a month or so off. I started it in February and March and April and took a month off in April and maybe a little bit longer. Connections, City of Marshfield uh, weekly newsletter. And uh, what I have is, we're also going to be doing an electronic version of this here. Uh, we'll hopefully be sending that out starting on Saturday. Um, and it's almost ready to go. And this will also be included, included in the electronic version, so you can print that off, because this is really our print edition. And uh, I'm looking to take it out to other places. I posted it on Facebook again this morning, it's Wednesday, and uh, asked anybody to email me to get on the electronic version, which gives you this as well, so you can print it. Uh, but I'm uh, looking for volunteers uh, to help pass this out and get this out into the community. I'll print those. Uh, if you were able to call me, 715-486-2070, I gladly print them, leave them at the front desk to have you pick up, or call me and I can set up an arrangement. You're going to hopefully see it at some gas stations. I asked Weilers the other day. Uh, they're letting me know. Uh, quick trip, you name it. Uh, we want to get this out uh, on a weekly basis, and this has information about our council people and just events that are happening within our city. So 
and uh, also a little uh, information from our mayor or city administrator or department head uh, that you, you can get a little information. It's just a one pager right now. Uh, the electronic version will be a little bit longer and, and uh, more in depth that you can click on links, but uh, we want to provide communication to all demographics. That's part of our plan. Uh, make sure that we're, we're doing that. So TV is a demographic. Uh, we understand that our viewing audience for TV is uh, different than our Facebook and our people that worry this. So any way that we can communicate uh, in different forms, please let me know, let Steve know, let anyone know in the city. Uh, I, I think that's one of our main goals this year uh, to get that out in transparency. Anything else, Steve? I, I would like to thank you. You and your first six months here, uh, the, the front part of 2019, have made a tremendous difference in what we do uh, in cable TV and social media in all aspects. So uh, thank you. And uh, yep. you know, we will continue to engage the public. You know, Sometimes we say, this is what we're doing at, here at City <laughs> Hall. You are us. So in other words, you are the city too as you, as you tune in today. Oh, yeah. And uh, we need all of you to participate as well. Exactly. That's how we grow as a community. And uh, if we all work together uh, between us and our city departments, Mackey, all the Main Street, you name it, yeah. I think uh, we'll all win, have a winning uh, option for all of our community members and our visitors and our new members you name it it, it will grow and I, and I already see it happening which is which is great so yeah and, and I'll end with this thought yep. we are we are always better when we hear from our citizens yep. we, we may take your idea and use it we may take parts of it we may just discuss it and go another direction but we are always better at City Hall when we hear from the public all right Steve well thank you for all that information and uh, I want to invite our guests that are watching us to uh, watch us on channel 991, uh, 6 p.m. Tuesday night for our Common Council meeting live on our cable station. Uh, we won't be on Facebook yet because it has to be approved. Uh, so hopefully that does happen and then they can follow us. Uh, not just Common Council, but our goal is to do all the committee meetings uh, that we film. So again, uh, Tom Laux, Steve Barg, City Administrator. Uh, this is our council preview. Thanks for watching and tune in in the next two weeks for our next, uh, next one that'll be happening and uh, we'll already be in July so wow. yeah it goes so fast <laughs> it uh, it'll be the 4th of July it before does. we know it so it again thanks for watching and I appreciate you guys tuning in